Uh, welcome again to this uh, last presentation in our series, the Jewish uh, wedding model. I presume that uh, the other four parts have been a blessing mm -hmm. to us. And uh, I just want to do this last session, part uh, five of five. And I pray that uh, the Lord of heaven will continue uh, giving us light and uh, enabling us to speak truth in love and uh, in sincerity. And so I'd like us to pray and then we'll be able to share in the word of God. Heavenly Father, without your strength, we can do nothing. We want to abide in you, that you may abide in us too, that we may produce much fruit. And so, Lord, accord us your spirit because it is the revealer and discerner of the deep things of your word. I pray that uh, this evening we may be blessed and your name may be glorified and the glory of man put in dust in Jesus' name. Amen. And so it has been a journey of uh, looking into the Jewish wedding model. And uh, it is it has been a blessing to me. and. Uh, there are things that uh, I'm learning. I know there are things that people are learning too. And uh, we pray that this journey will be a journey which uh, we shall be able to speak words that uh, will encourage those who are frail and weak, those whose faith is stuttering. And so I know much time has been spent and we go straight to the last presentation which is Matthew chapter 25, verse 1 to 13. That is what we are looking uh, unto, the parable of the 10 virgins and the midnight cry. Um, the traditional belief of this uh, parable has been, is often believed and taught, the 10 virgins parable with its midnight cry message is all in the past and that it is finished in 1844 because we find that uh, it was a message which was preached as the uh, feast of the trumpets and the first angel's message to herald the judgment hour. And uh, testimony of Jesus concerning this parable completely refutes the long-standing tradition that it is in the past. And so what you are going to do is to establish from the testimony of Jesus that the 10 virgin parable is present truth for all Advent believers right until the end of probational time. And so why is this important recapturing the parable of uh, the 10 virgins not being in the past? Because the marriage institution runs until, as an example, until the second coming of Jesus Christ. So the parable of the virgins cannot be in the past as long as the marriage institution really uh, 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 still uh, uh, exists. So when the third angel's message, this is in Review and Herald uh, uh, Book Two, Review and Herald Book Two, and this is page uh, 419. When the third angel's message is preached as it should be, power attends its proclamation and it becomes an abiding influence. It must be attended with divine power or it will accomplish nothing. I am often referred to the parable of the 10 virgins, five of whom were wise and five foolish. This parable has been and will be fulfilled to the very letter for it has a special application to this time. And like the third angel's message has been fulfilled and will continue to be present truth till the close of time. Review and Herald, August 19, 1890, paragraph three. So when is SDS midnight cry? When do we prepare for these end time events? We are told that we shall be tested by the image. The Lord has shown me clearly that the image of the beast will be formed before probation closes, for it is to be the great test for the people of God by which their eternal destiny will be decided. That is Bible Commentary, Volume 7, page 976, paragraph 2. This is the test that uh, the people of God must have before they are sealed. 
all who prove their loyalty to God by observing his law and refusing to accept a superior Sabbath will run under the ban of the Lord God Jehovah and will receive the seal of the living God. Those who yield the truth of heavenly origin and accept the Sunday Sabbath will receive the mark of the beast. Now, the virgins had to prepare until, uh, they, they had to prepare and there was a time which they could not continue to prepare. Even in the marriage relation, there is that which is to be prepared for a certain time. And you can't prepare such a things when you are already in the wedding. There are things which should be prepared prior. And so even the parable of the 10 virgins helps us to understand that uh, those who are entering in marriage there are things that uh, you must prepare beforehand. For if you wait until marriage, then you'll find that it is too, time too late to do that. And all you will have is trouble rising after trouble in the marriage. And uh, God permitting, we can go into the details of uh, some things of, that uh, have to be prepared. Just as we have to prepare for the Sunday Lord during the test, uh, during the formation um, uh, of uh, the, 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 the image, before the Sunday law is enacted, we have to be prepared as we see the signs accumulating of the coming Sunday law. And so we are told the great issue so near at hand enforcement of Sunday laws will weed out those whom God has not appointed and he will have a pure, true, sanctified ministry prepared for the latter. And we are looking at... Um, the parable of the 10 virgins and the midnight cry, when should we be preparing uh, and uh, in a marriage relationship, which are the things that we ought to do before we come into the marriage? We find that uh, uh, when Christ came examining those who had attended the wedding, he asked another man, how come it that you are here without having the wedding garment? And uh, it is not on the day of the wedding that actually the bride has to start looking for the wedding garment. And we find that uh, wedding garment represents character. And so there are things which you can't overlook when you are going to be married, character-wise, there are things you have to look into this woman before you marry her, so that you may not come into the marriage thinking that uh, these are things that can be changed and the end of the day you find that they cannot be changed. And that is why we have to prepare before the Sunday law uh, while we are seeing the winds of um, the Sunday law, the image of the beast is being formed. And so if the character cannot be made up before the time stipulated, then it means that time either has to be prolonged or this marriage has to be canceled or whoever is ready enters into the marriage. Now, it is something that has never been heard of that uh, a bride never prepared herself a well. And then when the bridegroom came, he took the lady who was ready. I have never heard such a thing. But when you look at the parable of the 10 virgins, those who are ready end as the marriage and that who is not ready does not end. I think it will be something so unique to find that a man has a bride and at the time of the coming to take her, she is not ready. And then he takes a lady in who is ready. Something that I'll need to hear about it. Or that the people might know the time of their visitation. There are many who have not yet had the tasting truth for this time. There are many with whom the spirit of God is striving. The time of God's destructive judgment is the time of mass for those who have had no opportunity to learn what is truth. Tenderly will the Lord look upon them. His heart of mercy is touched. His hand is still stretched out to save while the door is closed to those who will not enter. 97.2. Point three says the mercy of God is shown in the long forbearance. He is holding back his judgments, waiting for the message of warning to be sounded to all. Oh, if our people will feel as they should 
the responsibility resting upon them to give the last message of mercy to the world, what a wonderful work will be done. And so you find that uh, in this parable of the um, 10 virgins, there are things which they have to prepare before the time of the enacting of the Sunday law. They have to prepare during the, this time of test. When you are hearing that, oh, this is being done in the background, this is being down, done in the background, there's a lot that contains the Sunday law which has not been revealed unto us. But how does this relate to the marriage? There are things you have to discuss before you enter into the marriage, just like Christ will make up the character of the bride be to the stature he wants, then he gets himself into the marriage. Now, somebody would like to ask, what are some of these things that have to be prepared before you enter into the marriage? And uh, if you don't do that, then you will not be prepared for marriage and settling into the marriage. I'd like to share something. I won't be sharing so much, but this is uh, the, the last part of this presentation, but I hope that it will bless us. What are these things that uh, maybe we have to prepare about? In the, in, in the book, Child Guidance, um, the book, Child Guidance, page 63.3, uh, to 64.2. These are some of the things that uh, people have to be prepared before the marriage even can be entered in or uh, such a steps can be taken in a marriage relationship. Upon fathers as well as mothers rest a responsibility for the child's earlier as well as it is later training and for both parents, the demand of careful and thorough preparation is most urgent. So you find that there's a time of preparation and when that time is over, preparing becomes a hard thing, just like the 10 virgins have to prepare before. So even in marriage relationship, there are things which have to be prepared prior to some other things happening. Some of the things are here. Before taking upon themselves the possibilities of fatherhood and motherhood, men and women should become acquainted with the laws of physical development, with physiology and hygiene, with the bearing of prenatal influences, with the laws of heredity, sanitation, dress, exercise, and the treatment of disease. They should also understand the laws of mental development and moral training. Never will education accomplish all that it might and should accomplish until the importance of the parents' work is fully recognized and they receive a training for it is sacred responsibilities. Parents should study the laws of nature. They should become acquainted with the organism of the human body. They need to understand the functions of the various organs and their relations and dependent. They should study the relation of uh, uh, mental to the physical powers and the conditions required for healthy action of each. Now listen, to assume the responsibilities of parenthood without such a preparation is seen. So such a preparation should be made prior to the marriage or before people think of being fathers and mothers. Just like the 10 virgins have to prepare prior to Sunday law. So these things have to be prepared. Another thing she says that uh, it has to be prepared. Um, it is, um, let me see. Um, Another thing that um, this uh, person has to prepare is look at uh, child guidance, page uh, 372.3.4. Good cooks are few. Many mothers need to take lessons in cooking that they may set before the family well prepared, neatly served food. Our sisters often do not know how to cook, 
to search, I will say, I'll go to the very best cook that could be found in the country and remain there if necessary for weeks until I had become mistress of the art and intelligent, skillful, skillful cook. I will pursue this course if I were 40 years old. It is your duty to know how to cook and it is your duty to teach your daughters to cook. And so you find that these are some of the preparations that have to be made before marriage relation and the prospects of being mothers and being fathers. Just like we see that um, the 10 virgins had to prepare before time. And because they did not take this initiative, five amongst them were found foolish. What you are trying to say is that we don't want to be found foolish. And uh, I have said this severally that uh, the way we conduct our courtship, engagement, and marriage shows if we understand our obligations as Christians and if we are prepared for the translation. For the marriage institution is a miniature of the plan of redemption, entering it without the knowledge which is necessary for it to be successful is professing Christianity without having the power therein and rejecting the goldness therein. It is a solemn institution, and uh, sometimes we can miss the words as far as we want. We can give excuses of uh, what we want, but at the end of the day, the Lord is looking unto us, and he sees a people who are not prepared for redemption or for translation because at the marriage level, they have not prepared. So, my mind was carried to the future when the signal will be given. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. But some will have delayed to obtain the oil for replenishing their lamps. And too late they will find that character which is represented by the oil is not transferable. And uh, uh, you find that uh, it, it, it is uh, uh, again in our marriages that uh, we, we assume a lot of things that it shall be well. Now, you can't assume that it shall be well when you get to heaven. No, you will not assume that because everything has to be prepared prior to heaven where marriage is taking place and then the honeymoon. And so uh, even in uh, the marriage institution, you can't assume things that have to be done before the marriage. And um, the two types of servant produce the two types of virgins of the power of that is the faithful and wise servant and we were looking at the wise and the foolish in the previous uh, presentation. This wise gives meat in due season, that is, he gives present truth, produces the wise virgins. Evil servant believes in his heart that my Lord delayeth his coming, produces the foolish virgins. This is negligence in preparation also will produce a character of a foolish virgin. It is not trifling matter for those who have the light of truth to be non-committal, nor for the sentiments of the heart to be expressed in the words, my Lord delayed his coming. The influence of the peace and safety sentiment is in the midst of us. A worldly malarious influence prevails to suit those who should be stirred by the message of truth to stand as faithful sentinels at the post of duty. Truth must be expressed in our lives. The light must shine brightly or we shall cause others to stumble and fall. So as even um, the virgins are except, expected to shine their lights to the church, so in a marriage relationship, uh, a marriage relation, we are expected to practice all the truth we have received in each sphere um, uh, as the Lord has appointed it, uh, doing the very work that the Lord would like us to do and strengthening each other where we should strengthen each other and using our talents for the glory and honor of um, uh, his name, for the glory and honor of his name. Those who hide their light will soon lose all power to let it shine. They are presented, represented by the foolish virgins, and when the crisis comes and the last call is made, behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. They'll find that while they have been mingling with the world, their light has gone out. They did not continue to provide themselves with the oil of grace. The peace and safety cry hushed them to slumber and made them careless in regard to their light. Now, concerning this parable of the ten wise and uh, the ten virgins, five wise and uh, five foolish, you can check the story in Genesis chapter 19. The story where uh, 
Lot is delaying to get out of the city and be done what should be done. And the wife has invested in the city until when even she is told out of the city now. She is not willing to leave because where your money is is where your heart is. She is not willing until even at the last minute when the angels take their hands out of the land of Sodom and Gomorrah and they are told, run for your life and do not look back. The, the wife of Lot, in her mind, she is still clinging unto the things of Sodom and Gomorrah. And so you find that in a marriage relationship, under the third angel's message, there are things which the couples should be doing, uh, seeing that um, they set up an atmosphere where their children, character formation cannot be tenfold harder. But you find that the spouses are coming together, they intend to have children, and wherever they are going to settle, they are not going to reproduce a seed which is easier to control because of the environment that they are living in. Marriages under the third angels, when protracted, people should understand that we are in the day of atonement. And it is part of the midnight cry for these marriages to show that they believe we are in the day of atonement. They should take the steps necessary to be located where it's necessary so that if they have children, the children may have a heritage which is easier for character formation. And this is why she say in child guidance, I'll try and show you something uh, under the time that we are living in, in the midnight cry, how even it affects the family relationship and the, 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 the truth they have. Uh, this, um, it should be, let me check out that um, child guidance. Um, page 558, paragraph one. Look at this. We are talking about the midnight Christ, uh, uh, midnight cry and uh, the things that need to be done so that you may be able to go through the crisis as a family and connecting with the thematic connections uh, um, uh, of uh, the wise and the foolish spiritually according to the plan of redemption. The special work of parents is to make the laws of God plain to their children and to urge their obedience to them that they may see the importance of obeying God all the days of their life. This was the work of Moses. He was to join upon she was to enjoin upon parents their duty to give to their children an example of strict obedience. And this is the work that above everything else must be done in the home life today. It is to accompany the third angel's message. So parent, parenting or parenthood is part of the third angel's message. This was what was told Moses. He was told to do this and this. And then we are told in the book of Malachi chapter 4, I'll send, uh, remember the law of Moses, my servant, at Mount Horeb. And then he says, I'll send uh, Elijah the prophet before the dreadful day of the Lord, and he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to the fathers. So parenting is part of the third angel's message. And it is something that you have to prepare before you enter into the marriage, because if you wait until you get the children and then start preparation. It is too late. So you find that the hearts of the fathers shall be turned to the children and the hearts of the children shall be turned to the fathers. Remember ye the law of my servant Moses, which I gave unto Mount Horeb. And so we are told that parenting is part of the third angel's message. And uh, you know, as a church, we can't proclaim the third angel's message if we are not understanding and practicing it. And how do we know that we are ready to proclaim the third angel's message? We, we, we are told that parenthood is part of that. And so if we are finding that we have a problem in parenthood and uh, we don't know the skills to make an Adventist home, then there is no way we are also going to have the wisdom to proclaim the third angel's message in verity. 
you, 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 you just start seeing these thematic connections of the marriage relation and the midnight cry and the third angel's message because the return of the midnight cry is what will uh, um, uh, uh, climax into the loud cry. It will swell into the loud cry. And so needful preparation, we have to prepare. And so uh, we don't have to be cumbrous of ground. As Christ sat looking upon the party that waited for the bridegroom, he told his disciples the story of the 10 virgin by their experience, illustrating the experience of the church that shall live just before his second coming. So you are finding Jesus Christ is talking about this marriage institution and he is relating it to the, uh, 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 to the experience of the church uh, which shall be there at the second coming. And so you can look just at the families and see how prepared the church is. And the condition as we speak right now at family levels is not that promising. It's not that which reveals that uh, these people are prepared spiritually to be able to proclaim the third angel's message. And this hurts so much, but how I pray that uh, God will have mercy upon us and give us the wisdom that we need at such a time as this so that um, we may be prepared. And when we are prepared at the family level, then being prepared at the church level, I have said, is not a difficult thing. But uh, many of uh, the things which are impeding us is um, whatever is happening at the family level is really stagnating us uh, in uh, proclaiming the third angel's message in verity. And... Uh, the two classes of watchers represent the two classes who profess to be waiting for their Lord. They are called virgins because they profess the pure faith. And so the lambs which all the virgins have is equal to the word of God. Psalms 119, 105, lambs is equal to the word of God. Acts 17, 11, the wise virgins act the part of modern day noble Bereans under the symbol in the parable of their trimming their lambs, the word of God they will rightly divide the scriptures. 2 Timothy 2.15, study to show yourself an approved workmanship, rightly dividing the word of God, not being ashamed, no, which needs uh, not to be ashamed at all. This action of, by the 10 virgin is defined for us by the testimony of Jesus, an intense study of the scriptures. And uh, at the call, the bridegroom cometh, going out to meet him, the waiting ones arose and trimmed their lands. They studied the word of God, with an intense intensity of interest, with an intensity of interest before unknown. Angels were sent from heaven to arouse those who had become discouraged and prepare them to receive the message. Now, hold on a minute. These people were able to study the word with an intensity that had never then been there before. How is it with our family uh, uh, setups? Do we really study the word of God or we just do this morning and evening devotions because of the time and then it passes by? Or even as we see the days approaching, um, you see, when uh, God wanted to take the children of Israel out of Egypt, he told them, gather your children together so that you may tell them the statutes of the Lord they may not defile the land that they are going in. They may be prepared for that. Are we gathering our children together? Are we wise virgins that we are gathering our families together and telling them, you know, as a family, we have to be an example of a practical third angel's message before we go to the outside world to proclaim it. And one way of uh, showing that we are preparing for it uh, in the in PH 0808, PH, uh, uh, look at this. Um, PH 081. Page 38, paragraph one. We want to see if we are wise virgins. Uh, are we preparing enough at a family level so that we may sound the midnight cry again and the loud cry? At a family level, again, you look at this. Complete separation. The command found in Revelation 18, verse four. 
come out of harm my people means to come out of those institutions which will place in the minds of our young people principles which are apt to make them join the class of worshipers of which we read in 2 Timothy 3 5, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. As faithful watchmen, we should be just as desirous of getting our children out of the popular schools as we are to call the older people out of the popular churches. The popular churches are only a product of worldly education. So to get at the root of the matter, we must separate ourselves from that which creates the condition in which all the religious world at present finds it. Again, you start seeing this connection of the family set up with the, the wise and the foolish and the midnight cry that swells into the loud cry. And so this midnight cry, have we started to sound it? Are we gathering our children together? Are we taking them out of all these institutions that will place in their minds uh, a, a, a knowledge that will make them be part of those who will form the image of the beast? Just upward a little, this is uh, what we read. Education in the formation of the beast and the image. The early reformers found it necessary to have their own courses of study textbooks, teachers, methods, principles, etc. They separated themselves completely from the popular schools of the day. It required courage and faith in those days to take such a stand, and it will require even more courage and faith for those who are preparing for the translation to take the stand which the testimonies are pleading for them to take. They knew that if their children should go to the schools where the popular education was um, given, they will receive the mark of the papacy or the beast. Those who are living up to the light at the present time will see even more clearly that if their children continue to go to the popular schools, they will receive such a principles as will compel them to assist in getting, in giving life to the image of the beast. Anyone who has a knowledge of the third angel's message and who will take the trouble to examine the studies and methods of the popular system of education can see that the books are filled with those errors which will oblige those who are receiving the education from them to take the dreadful step which will bring upon the world a religious and civil darkness greater than has, greater than has ever been known before. Now, when, when we hear these things about the wise and the foolish and the preparation that has to be made, we, we, we think that the Lord is calling us at a family level to do something so difficult to do. And you know, with man, it is uh, not possible, but with God, it is possible. And so our only safety is to implicitly rely on Jesus Christ, looking unto Jesus Christ, the author and finisher of our faith. And what is impossible by men, it will be possible by God himself. So, uh, are we having that extra oil? Are we preparing at the family level to be part of the wise virgins to sound the midnight cry when it comes again and it swells into the loud cry? Or are we still debating whether it is practicable or it is not practicable? So we must study the word of God with intensity as a, at a family level. We know the requirements of God upon us and uh, prepare our families to be part of the wise virgins and not foolish virgin. The wise virgins do not give the midnight cry, but rather they receive the message that is proclaimed from someone else. At the call, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. The one waiting ones arose and trimmed their lamps. They studied the word of God with an intensity of interest before unknown. Angels were sent from heaven to arouse those who had become discouraged and prepare them to receive the message. So we are hearing the messages. We are seeing the signs of the time that we are at the end. And as a family, we should be gathering each other together and saying, my husband, what, what can we do to be prepared for this third angel's message? It may not get us unaware. My wife, what can we do? And children, what shall we do to make sure that uh, we are right with God? If we don't have this uh, family set up meetings and be able to discuss these things at a family level so that we may be prepared when we are called upon to sound the loud cry, no 
one amongst the family members is acting as a stumbling block for the message to go forth. And so passing over, um, I have to reach somewhere. And uh, we find that in Review and Herald, February 3, 1903, God is dishonored when we do not receive the communication that he sends us. Thus we refuse the golden oil which he would pour out uh, pour into our souls to be communicated to those in darkness. And um, one thing is certain, this is um, Special Testimony Series B, uh, Volume 7, page 57. One thing is certain is soon to be realized. The great apostasy, which is developing and increasing and waxing stronger, um, and will continue to do so until the Lord shall descend from heaven, with a shout. At this time, the Laodicean message is to be given to arouse the slumbering church. And so we, as a people, we need to be we as a people, as families, and uh, Sometimes you hear people say that, uh, okay, let us wait until the whole church comes on board and then we shall be able to do some things. No, we should be doing the things that the Lord would want to do us as a family. And then if the church accepts to join in, then it can join in because the church starts at home. We don't start the church in the buildings outside there. We start the church in our own houses. And so are we waiting to see the whole church revived? that time will never come. That is uh, Selected Messages, book one, page uh, 122, 118 to 122. And so there needs to be a preparation that uh, should be made so that uh, we may not be caught unaware. And so once Christ comes, he does not change the character of anyone. The character is sealed. And what we are doing right now, it is sealing of our characters. And um, if we can be sealed at this time, there is no time that we will ever be sealed. The testimony of Jesus Christ is, now is the time when you hear the voice of God today. Open the door of the heart. He is in the business of cleansing the sanctuary. And uh, I'll read something from 4SP266.1. Uh, let me put it here. The cleansing of the sanctuary therefore involves a work of investigative judgment. This work must be performed prior to the coming of Christ to redeem his people. For when he comes, his reward is with him to give every man according to his work. And so we should be preparing today to face the things that will be in the future. It is not the time to start um, revising when the exam is on the table. When the test goes forth, it is a time to do it. It's not a time to revise it. <clears throat> and uh, we shall only be ready at the church levels if uh, we have prepared ourselves at the home level. It is therefore thou shalt not, if therefore thou shalt not watch, I'll come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I'll come upon thee. How perilous is the condition of those who, growing weary of their watch, like the foolish virgins, perhaps the compiler turn to the attractions of the world. While the man of business is absorbed in the pursuit of gain, while the pleasure lover is seeking indulgence, while the daughter of passion is arranging her adornments, it may be in that hour the judge of all the earth will pronounce the same that thou art weighed in the balance and art found one. Now you, you again see that uh, the very things we do at the family level will actually connect with the judgment that is going up in heaven. And at that time, when uh, 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 the, the bridegroom appeared, we shall be found that we don't have oil. So in our businesses at a family level, you know, we are in the day of atonement and uh, there are things, there are jobs which should be done. There are jobs which should not be done. 
There are dresses which should be dressed. There are dresses which should not be dressed. And there are things with the investments which should be done. There are investments which are, should not be done. So while the man of business is absorbed in the pursuit of gain, while the pleasure lover is seeking indulgence, while the daughter of passion is arranging her adornments, as just we do the things in the household setup, we are in the business of proclaiming the third angel's message or we are in the business of making ourselves foolish virgins. In the balance of the sanctuary, the seventh-day Adventist church is to be weighed. She will be judged by the privileges and advantages that she has had. If her spiritual experience does not correspond to the advantage that Christ at infinite cost has bestowed on her, if the blessing conferred have not qualified her to do the work entrusted to her, on her will be pronounced the sentence found wanting. By the light bestowed, the opportunities given, will she be judged? And so uh, that is the, what the Lord is saying unto us. And uh, I hope that um, we will study these things for ourselves, how this Jewish wedding was a model for the preparation of uh, the church before the crisis break. And so we don't want to be caught unaware at this point, but we want the Lord to find us when we are prepared and we can be an example of an Adventist family that can be used for the uh, sounding of the midnight cry and then sounding of uh, the loud cry. The last thing that uh, I may say, that um, this one, it is important. How then shall we deal with our family members who will not walk? as uh, we want to walk. How, what shall we do at the end of the day? I'll try to, this is 2SG, 2SG. Uh, Hope to get it soon. USG. Okay. I'll start uh, with 5T, 5.3. Just the last statements. How, how do we deal with our relatives who will not come along in this message? Because this is the question that always is asked now. We know the truth, but what shall we do with our family members? We are told in 5T, 5.43.1. We cannot serve God and the world at the same time. Sorry. We cannot serve God and the world at the same time. We must not center our affections on world relatives who have no desire to learn the truth. We may seek in every way while associated with them to let our light shine. But our words, our deportment, our customs and practices should not in any sense be molded by their ideas and customs. We are to show forth the truth in all our intercourse with them. If we cannot do this, the less association we have with them, the better it will be for our spirituality. If we place ourselves among associates whose influence has a tendency to make us forgetful of the high claims the Lord has upon us, we invite a temptation and become too weak in moral power to resist it. We come to partake of the spirit and cherish the ideas of our associates and to place sacred and eternal things lower than the ideas of our friends. We are, in short, living just as the enemy of all righteousness design we should be. If these things are self-explanatory, I'll not be adding anything on it. Another thing, um, we are told in 2SG266, to SG266. Look at this again. I saw that those who profess the truth should hold the standard high and induce others to come up to it. I saw that some will have to walk the straight path alone. Their companions and children will not walk the self-denying pathway with them. Patience and forbearance should ever characterize the lives of those lone pilgrims. Um, following the example of their blessed master. They will have many trials to endure, 
but they have a hope that makes the soul strong, that bears them up above the trials of earth, that elevates them above scorn, derision, and reproach. Those who possess a hope like this should never indulge a harsh, unkind spirit. This will only injure their own souls and drive their friends further from the truth. Treat them tenderly. Give them no occasion to reproach the cause of Christ, but never yield the truth to please anyone. Be decided, be fixed, be established, be not of doubtful mind. Again, but if your companions and children will not come, if you cannot win them to yield to the claims of truth, make their lives here as pleasant as possible for all they will ever enjoy will be this poor world. But let not your duty to them interfere with your duty to God. Pursue a straightforward course. Let nothing they may do or say provoke an angry word from you. You have a hope that will yield you consolation amid the disappointments and trials of life. Your companions and children who will not be induced to tread the narrow, cross-bearing pathway with you have not this divine consolation. They should have your pity for this world is all the heaven they will have. Another thing. Uh, another thing we are told is that um, This is uh, PP 162.1. We should beware of treating lightly God's gracious provisions for our salvation. There are Christians who say, I do not care to be saved unless my companion and children are saved with me. They feel that heaven will not be heaven to them without the presence of those who are so dear. But have those who cherish this feeling a right conception of their own relation to God in view of his great goodness of mercy toward them? Have they forgotten that they are bound by the strongest ties of love and honor and loyalty to the service of their creator and redeemer? The invitations of mercy are addressed to all and because of our friends reject the Savior's pleading love, shall we also turn away? The redemption of the soul is precious. Christ has paid an infinite price for our salvation, and no one who appreciates the value of this great sacrifice or the worth of the soul will despise God's offered mercy because others choose to do so. The very fact that others are ignoring his just claims should arouse us to greater diligence that we may honor God ourselves and lead all whom we can influence to accept his love. Maybe something else will make sense. Uh, OT 5.23. It is frequently more essential than many realize that early associations should be broken up in order that those who are to speak in Christ's stead may stand in a position where God can educate and qualify them for his great work. Kindred and friends often have an influence which God sees will greatly interfere with the instruction he designs to give his servants. Suggestions will be made by those who are not in close connection with heaven that will, if heeded, turn aside from their holy work, those who should be light bearers to the world. Before God can use him, Abraham must be separated from his former associations that he may not be controlled by human influence or rely upon human aid. Now that he has become connected with God, this man must henceforth dwell among strangers. His character must be peculiar, differing from all the world. He could not even explain his course of action so as to be understood by his friends, for they were idolaters. Spiritual things must be spiritually designed. Therefore, his motives and his actions were beyond the comprehension of kindred and friends. God is calling us to something higher. And uh, fundamental of Christian education, I'm just going to read one more quote and we are done. Fundamental of uh, Christian education, page 289.1. There are many in church who at heart belong to God, but God calls upon those who claim to believe the advanced truth to rise above the present attitude of the popular churches of today. 
Where is the self-denial? Where is this cross-bearing that Christ has said should characterize his followers? The reason we have had a, so little influence upon unbelieving relatives and associates is that we have manifested little decided difference in our practices from those of the world. Parents need to awake and purify their souls by practicing the truth in their home life. When we reach that standard that the Lord will have us reach, worldlings will regard Seventh-day Adventists as old, singular, straight-laced extremists. We are made spectacle unto the world, unto the world and to angels and to men. And so uh, Christ Object Lesson, page 225, paragraph 1. <laughs> 224.2, 225.1. The man who said, I have married and therefore cannot come, represents a large class. <laughs> many are many there are who allow their wives or their husband to prevent them from heeding the call of God. The husband says, I cannot obey my convictions of duty while my wife is opposed to it. Her influence will make it exceedingly hard for me to do so. The wife hears the gracious call, come, for all things are now ready. Remember the voice of the bridegroom. And she says, I pray thee have me excused. My husband refuses the invitation of mercy. <coughs> he says that his business stands in the way. I must go with my husband and therefore I cannot come. The children's hearts are impressed. They desire to come, but they love their father and mother. And since this do not heed the gospel call, the children think that they cannot be expected to come. They too say, have me excused. All these refuse the Savior's call because they fear division in the family circle. They suppose that in refusing to obey God, they are ensuring peace and prosperity of the home. But this is a delusion. Those who sow selfishness will reap selfishness, in rejecting the love of Christ, they reject that which alone can impart purity and steadfastness to human love. They will not only lose heaven, but will fail of the true enjoyment of that for which heaven was sacrificed. Last, this is what should we do? PCP, uh, Peter's counsel to parent. This should be page 29. It is our last reading. Peter's counsel to parents, page 29, paragraph 2. Brethren and sisters, I beg everyone, everyone of you to make the most of this calm meeting or the best of this series. If you have backslidden, I entreat you for Christ's sake to return to him. Be reconverted. Let the conver con conversions um, begin today. Let the parents confess to their children in regard to the points on which they have neglected their duty. Let them confess their negligence in regard to allowing the children their children to follow the fashions and to mingle in worldly society simply because they wanted to be like the world. It is impossible for us to be Christ-like while we are world-minded. We cannot separate ourselves from the world itself. We must remain in the world, but we should separate from it is evil practices, it is wrong ideas, it is sinfulness. We should practice self-denial in everything in order to have power by living faith in Christ to claim the richest promises given us in his word. And then we are given an example of the Israelites. Just before the firstborn was slain in Egypt, the Lord instructed the Israelites to gather their children into their houses with them and to strike the lintel and the two sides post of their doors with blood so that when the destroying angel went through their land, he would recognize the houses thus marked as the dwelling place, places of Christ followers and pass over them. Today, we must gather our children about us if we desire to save them from the destructive power of the evil one, the conflict between Christ and Satan will increase in intensity until the end of this earth history. We are to have faith in the blood of Christ in order that we may pass safely through the perilous times just before us. Let the children receive the blessings of this meeting. If you try to help them by personal labor in your family tents, working with Christ-like simplicity, the reviving reformatory power of God will come into your tents and enable you to pray in faith. Then you can ask for the Lord's richest blessings to rest upon the little company in your tent. We are told, if we work diligently upon the plan of addition, we shall not be barren in a knowledge of Christ. We should, however, take heed to ourselves, 
lest we fall because we do not cherish and cultivate the Christian graces. He that lacketh these things is blind, that is, he is Laodicea, and cannot see afar off, and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. And we know that the state of the church described of Laodicea is the same state of the foolish virgins. This scripture brings to view those who are in divided state, those who talk as they please, those who indulge appetite and passionate speech, failing to take themselves in hand. Such a person have no moral strength to carry out the principles that will bring them to them as overcomers, the crown of life. They are like a man who has forgotten he has been purged from his old sins. And so may the Lord bless us. May the Lord strengthen us and the Lord may equip us with uh, the necessary knowledge so as we may not be found as uh, foolish virgins, but we may be found as wise virgins. Shall we Amen. pray in closing? Heavenly Father, you have given everything that we need to know how we should prepare at this time. Lord, where there is lacking strength, where marriage institution have been ended without knowledge, Lord, rectify those marriages. Bring a healing and bring a reformatory spirit in those marriages. We thank you and we bless your name because that which has been impossible, Lord Christ overcame and his victory is our victory. Thank you for your children. Continue abiding in our hearts and Lord, seal our hearts for thy courts above in heaven. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.